Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. I have the great pleasure of interviewing someone that I absolutely love and adore and have gotten to know very well over the past several years. His name is Joe Burns, and he is a speaker, a coach, a money master, and the founder of Next Gen Millionaires. He talks to money. No, this is not metaphorical. This is real. (laughs) He really talks to money. And the best part, it talks back. Now, that one is metaphorical. That one's not real. (laughs) But he talks in his mind. The money talks back in his mind, which is real enough, right? Because it has a lot to say. And it's time to listen to what your money is telling you because you're only one story away from success. And before I let Joe start talking, I promised him that I wouldn't talk that much today. And I really won't, but I do want to share with you that Joe literally changed my money story and saved my marriage. And what else did he do? (laughs) Oh, I know. Help me be make a million in my business. So when I met Joe, um, I was making about a hundred thousand in revenue. And I was really, you know, geared up and excited to get to 300,000 in revenue and then a million in revenue. And yet I was stuck at 100,000. And Joe and I started working together because I definitely had a money story that was holding me back. But what I thought my money story was, was quite different than what Joe actually uncovered. And that's one of the many things that he is brilliant at is helping you do that. And then hmm, basically saving my life. Yep. I'm going to say it that I'm going to say it's that extreme because if I wouldn't have had my husband, if I wouldn't have my business anymore, I don't know. You know, those are the things I most adore in my life. So Joe Burns, thank you for saving my marriage, my life, my business. Welcome. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks for having me on your show. I and then the sentiment's the same, you know, I love you. I love working with you. I love the, the relationship that we've built. Um, and, and I have stories like that, right. Where people were like, Oh, thank you for this. And I'm like, you know, in the beginning of coaching, I'm like, well, you know, you really did the work and you did the work, but sometimes I think it's that, that relationship that we have with money. And we're like, Oh, this is all over. Right. Cause that was where you kind of were. It's like, I, I'm so far in debt. I have all these issues and I'm, it, it just feels so insurmountable. To the point where it did like, I'm gonna lose it all. Yeah. I thought I was going to go bankrupt. Yeah. Lose yeah. everything. Lose, like you said, your husband, your, um, yeah. Your business. I mean, the, the things yeah. that you really adore my home. Things. It's the life you live. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we're, we're all in that situation, right. And at some point of our life where we feel like there's mm-hmm. nothing more that can, like, we can't make it out of it. And most of the time it's because of money, right? Or we think it's because of money, like you said. And we, we blame money. We blame that relationship we have with it. And it's not coming in. It's, it's not showing up when we need it. And if we just had more, then life would be better. Uh, that's what I thought. If I had more money, it would be okay. Yeah. And, and that's the... That's but it, the, but that's, that's the, not that's, real. It's not real. <laughs> yeah, it was, because <laughs> that was money. not real at all. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um, and that, that's one of the biggest fallacies. Is that people think, and, and I always point them off. There's plenty of websites out there people can go search, but look at uh, people who win the lotto, right? They'll win three, four hundred million dollars, and you can you can almost to the day watch it that within two, three years they are beyond broke. And people always go how because they always bring this up to me, and I just kind of chuckle when they do because I hear it probably about weekly anymore. It's like if I just had more money, I'm like, well, wait a minute, hold on. Like go here's some case studies. Go read these because these are in my in my eyes real case studies, and people you know post it on the internet thinking oh look look at them. But in in my mind when we talk about money relationships and the money side of things, they're real case studies because it shows if I gave you a bunch of cash right now, you would probably end up in the same boat as they would. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because we can't handle that emotional right. piece that we have that tie to money is what the real issue is. And so, you know, for where you're at, we worked on not the, really the money stuff. I mean, I think you would agree. We, I didn't, I don't talk about money a lot. I talk about it up front, but when we actually mm. get into coaching, we don't talk a lot about it because what I do know is it's not the real issue, you know? So if we can find what that real issue is and work on that, then what the cool effect is, and this is what I love so much, is we don't talk about money, we really don't work a whole lot on it. And then you make a whole bunch more, right? And then you start creating that impact and change within your life and your business that you want. And you start to have joy in what you're doing. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what really makes my heart happy. That's why I continue to do what I do. Because yeah, I want to help people make more money, but it's because like for you, Kathy, to build your community, to, to help other VAs and VEs like get out there and like really shine in the world. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have the resources to do that, then we end up with just a big dream, but we're broke. And oh, we that was me when, when I met you and Joe, you know, quite honestly, I didn't even realize how broke I was. I had been in such deep denial. I don't know if you remember, uh, cause I don't remember exactly either, but I hadn't even told you everything. And then if, as you were working with me, suddenly it came out and you're like, what? <laughs> oh, wow. You didn't tell me this before. Yeah. And I really didn't realize I'd been hiding it. That is how deeply in denial I was, how bad my relationship was with money. Yeah. And, and it's true. I, I, I still remember that day. Right. And you can, and we had a set amount of appointments you were working with me for. And it was like the second to last or the last one. I think, I think we met like yes. one or two more times after that. Like, you're like I got to come clean with you. I'm like, okay, what's going like, okay, cool. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what do we got to come clean about Kathy? And then you just like laid mm -hmm. all on. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Well, that's good that it's out now. Right. But there's, and that's what I always got to remind my clients too. There's no judgment for me. I'm just like, I'm a problem solver. Let's go. Let's go. And there really it. wasn't. I mean, you weren't even phased by it. You're just like, oh, okay, well, let's figure this out. Step yeah. one. It's like, <laughs> let's do X, Y, yeah. and Z, right? And and you went and did that, which was amazing. And I love that about you. Well, you're just like, okay, I'll go do it. Yeah, but it was incredibly emotional for me. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, I was crying a whole lot. Yeah. And um, and and having you be so calm and so non-judgmental and just so matter of fact. Well, step one, you got to tell your husband. Then step two you can be out of this debt in six months. And I was like, what? I can be out of this in six months. And you're like, oh yeah, or less. And I didn't believe you at all, did I? <laughs> no, you didn't at all. You you, you challenged me. And, and in the end, the, the core result was, is you made it out of it even faster. Like you just like got even faster and you went and did it. Yeah. But here's the thing, like when you're hiding with money in this relationship, and that's kind of where I want to, I mean, we've already started where I want to really start. Like <laughs> money is just yeah. a relationship. You know, and if we look at it like that, then it's like, Okay, if we're going to hide from money, if we're going to hide from these other people, who else are we hiding from? And it's usually ourselves, right? We don't want to, like you said, you don't want to ad admit that where you're at is where you're at. The cool thing about that, though, is once we understand where that's at, then we can start making a plan for like where we want to go and how we're going to get there. But if we just sit here, right? And a lot of people will do that with their businesses. They're like, I don't know, I want to make like, you know, a million dollars in my business. Well, who doesn't? Like everybody does because we know what we can do with that million dollars. The problem is, is we don't have a very sure plan on how to get there. And then we insert like our own kind of mental issues and our, and, and like our own hangups and things that we're having processed or we're hiding from ourselves. And then we want to blame money to be like, well, we, I just didn't make enough this year. Right. Right. And it's like, or oh, I spent too much. Yeah. Or I spent didn't like, make enough, spent too much. Yeah. I have all those, right. You, you spend too much. You don't make enough. You save too much. You don't save enough. Right. It's, it's always this not enough, not enough on either side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So if we can bring it back to be like, oh, wait a minute, where am I at with myself, my relationship with myself? Because a lot of us don't like ourselves. Like I know I used to be in that space where I didn't like myself very much. So what I do, I'd hide in other things. Right. If money's just going to like sit here and say, hey, Kathy, this is what you're making, but it's not enough to cover your bills or you're so far in debt that you're now you're going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. We don't want to look at that as humans. We're like, nah, I'll just put that on the shelf and I'll come back to it later. That's what I did for almost a year. Yeah. And then there's a day of reckoning that comes eventually, right? And you're mm -hmm. like, there was, wow, what's happening? It was, it was uh, tax time for me. 
that's when I was like, okay, so I have to come clean because it's almost tax time. And my husband does our taxes and I have to involve him in our taxes. So he's going to find out what I've been doing yeah, <laughs> and how far in debt we are. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the hard part. Right. And I look back, right. And pulling back to my own story. And I think this is how it could be so calm. Like when you come, to, you know, you came to me and you're like, Hey Joe, I'm here. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, that's cool. I've been there too. Right. Mm. Like, so you can really relate. I can, I can super relate. And that's what I, I think sometimes, like I call myself the money master. It doesn't mean I've mastered all of money. Right. But I'd be, I'd, mm-hmm. I started to really master that emotional side of it in my life because I've been where you have been, right. I've been places. We lost a house one time, right. We try, I, I, I drained my 401k to try to save the house. Mm-hmm. And in the end we had to let it go no matter like anyways, right. That was wow. incredibly tough. Yeah. Right. Hindsight now. Right. Cause that's always the best. Like when you look back at it, you're like, Oh, experience is the best teacher. I'm like, I should have never spent that money on that. Right. I should have kept the money because cash was better for me. But you know, our, our story and you know this, but I'll help everybody see this, but looking yeah, back. I, now, you got you got to tell the listeners, tell the listeners your story, Joe. So, you know, really where, where my kind of that money mastery piece of mind started and that, you know, this is like, everybody's like, oh, Joe, you're so good at it. You still have problems with it. I had someone ask me that like last night and I'm like, yeah, I still struggle. And I just hear my own voice in my head saying, hey, guess what? It's not about money. It's about, you know, what, what's the reaction coming up? Because my money mastery story started really kind of when I look at it in hindsight back in 2008, right? During that financial crisis in the United mm-hmm. States. Um, I worked for a bank in IT. And there was some, like, I had, I had worked at the same bank. This is how long I worked there forever. Um, when 2001 hit, right, and 9-11. Um, and there were some scare around layoffs and things like that. And the bank was in a good space, so I never got laid off. So I was one of the fortunate people who didn't get hit by that one. 2008 rolls around. I'm still there. Um, and still nothing, right? That financial crisis happened, and I didn't lose my job at a bank, right? So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like... I've, I've, I've let now avoided in my like adult career, of, like working somewhere to like major times where I could have been laid off and it didn't happen. So from a, from a confidence perspective of me finding work, I was pretty happy. The problem was um, in that same year, my wife, Debbie went through a traumatic life experience, right? And she was, her story is, and if you find her, you can hear all the detail. Uh, but basically what happened was she was held up at gunpoint twice in six weeks, working at a, a small credit union. Um, and, and what happened after that was there was a whole, whole bunch of mental health things that, that started from that. Right. And, and the, the creation and kind of linked to some childhood stuff, and a lot of things, but just like exemplified PTSD she was already living with, but she didn't know. Mm-hmm. So we basically lost half our income that year. So I'm like, I'm a problem solver. I'm just going to find a new job. Right. I've been like, literally I've been at that place for 12 years. So I'm like, Hey, it's time to move on. There were some things happening I didn't like. So I'm like, you know, kind of that, those boundaries you're living with. And, and we live with a lot of boundaries in work and in our businesses. And it's like, I was doing things I didn't want to do. So I'm like, I'm going to hit burnout here. So I need something fresh, something new, right? 12 years at one place anymore is a long time. You know, it's not a very like, long time. I, I remember my dad saying at the same place that he was at for 40 years. I'm like, there's no way I can stay anywhere for that long. Like, so I've been there for a while. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna find a new job, right? I'm in IT. There's lots of jobs still. I have a lot of skill set. I have some specific skill sets so I can kind of move around. Um, where it fell, interesting enough, like we live in Utah, I grew up in Utah, uh, found a job in Maryland. So that's like 2000 miles away. Um, the naivety of us and sometimes naivety is good right? Because we, we started on this adventure because we were really naive. Like I look back at it now and I'm like, with the knowledge I have now, no way would have ever done that. But we literally tried to sell our house, put it up on the market um, after all the housing market fell out, right? We bought it the high. We bought in oh, yeah. December of 2007. So it was like as expensive as the house could get. And now we're trying to sell it in like July of 2009. Like it's just no market for house sales at the time. So we moved to Maryland um, Debbie gets a lot of really good help with her mental health. The problem here, and this is kind of where the money mastery really started. That's why I put it back on that is I had to figure out how to replace half our yearly income. We moved across the country. Now in the naivety back to that part, I didn't realize how expensive cost of living was in Maryland compared to Utah is night and day. So if anybody the East coast versus like, you know, the Rocky <laughs> mountain West, like it's a big difference. 
Um, yeah. And I got a substantial raise. Like I, I got a $30,000 a year raise. But what I didn't take into consideration from the money perspective was we lost my wife's income and cost of living was like almost double. So here I am making 82,000 was what I went out there for. Right. And Which is math, a great income. It was. I still had this yeah. in my brain though around money and negotiations because I'm like, I'm in IT. This is like the golden age of IT, right? Still even I'm like, I should be making more, but I, I didn't understand negotiations and money and all this stuff. Like I came from where everybody's at. Like, I promise you, I went through all the same stuff. <laughs> like I'm no different. Right. I, but applied it. And what happened was we're there. I got a couple raises, but medical bills over the, the first two years we lived there was just insurmountable. We owed a lot of money to a lot of people. I got to the point where I'd gotten raises at where I worked. I finally got hired on because I went out there for a contract, which was even more crazy, right? Moved 2,000 miles for mm. a contract. You don't even know if you have a real job, right? Secure. Mm -hmm. um, but I was making, like, within two years of moving out there, um, I was making 106,000. So I negotiated. I learned to negotiate. I'm like, yeah, I need to make more money. Fabulous. Right? That's amazing. Yeah. Out of necessity, though, at this point, right? It's not because I'm like, hey, can I do this? I'm like, my family's going to starve if I don't. Right. So I negotiated more money. And even still then, because of our medical bills, I was still asking our local church group for help. Right. And they came in and they were uh, my hats off, right. To church groups and people who can help with people, help people in times like this, because they taught me a valuable lesson to ask. Like I'd always, I'd always like kind of paid into the, in, into the process, right. And helped other people out. And it took mm -hmm. a big hit to my pride to have, have to say, Hey, listen, I make all this money now. Right. Again, back to making more money is not going to solve your problems because I'm making $106,000 a year. That's a good size of money. Right? That, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good chunk of first salary. But I was still asking them for yeah. help. I couldn't pay the bills and feed my family. And they were mm -hmm. so gracious and so great. And they're like, yeah, let's help you out how we can. All right. And then as we got through, Debbie started to heal and we started getting back kind of to a, a normalcy. And then fast forward a couple more years as I continued this process, right? And I started applying subconsciously kind of the, the feelings of, of money mastery and what I've developed today. Um, you know, and I moved that 106 within the next less than three years, I went to 120. So wow. in six years, I went from making $55,000 a year at a corporate job to making $120,000 a year at a corporate job. That's amazing. Right. That's like, that doesn't happen. And so when, no. I, when, when I started coaching, I started looking back and I'm like, where did this money mastery thing start from? And so I started mapping out like my experience and what did I do? And it took me, you know, 10 years to develop a kind of a theory around it. Um, but that's the same thing I taught you, Kathy, and like how fast you came out of it, right? I, I, I just kind of took and engineered what I help people with today because I know it's possible mm -hmm. if I could do it because I wasn't making lots of money like when I started that journey but I ended making quite a bit. And then fast forward a little bit, my last corporate job that I had, I actually negotiated a, a rate that they had to go back and ask their leadership for more money to hire me. Woohoo! Right? In a market where people <laughs> say, oh, you can't get that. And yeah. so I have to start asking, if people keep saying no to me or say you can't do that, but I continually do it, am I, have I figured out the system or am I just special? All the above. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm a cool dude. And I'll say that, but I don't think I'm you are cool dude. that people just like, you know, are going to do weird things for me, but it's how much I work on myself. Right. And that's why I always help my clients and go back to what's this money relationship, because if we can solve that, now that's a really good relationship, right? They have relationship counseling for, for couples, right? When couples start having problems for families and for trauma victims and all this stuff, but we don't understand that a lot of the money stuff is there's a lot of trauma attached to it. And so we, we have to have it to survive. And most of us in life just kind of have enough to survive and that's it. Mm -hmm. What happens if we can get over that? Like then what dreams can we really enable? Like what, what can we go do? What's the impact we can make on the earth? Because yeah. you better believe like, and I'll put this out here because I think it's fun to talk to you about this. You know, my goal is that when I die, people equate my name to money in a way that they say, you know, my life is better because I met Joe, because now I can go do the things I want to do and money's not the stopper. 
No, you don't have to wait till you die. Uh, you already did that for me, and I know you've done it for a lot of other people too. Yeah, but that's so. Congratulations, you've already achieved your your goal, and you're just going to keep doing it for more and more people. And that's and that's the goal, right? And um, you know, looking at uh, the different different ways that I can you know do give back to communities and you know places because again, I don't know everything about it, but I know a lot about it. And, you know, when you read at the beginning, people always ask me this weird, the weird thing when I say, I talk to money and like I was on an mm-hmm. internet podcast interview um, a little bit ago, you know, and, and he was really like fascinated by this thing, this claim. I said, I can talk to money. And he's like, so what, what, how does this work? I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I have a, I mean, you know, I'll show you. I have a, I have a stack of cash that sits on my desk. Right. And if you're not already on YouTube, uh, you might want to go look on YouTube because uh, Joe just how much money are, do you have there that you're oh, showing? There's, 10, there's a one hundred dollar bill on top. But yep. sorry, how much? There's ten thousand. So there's a hundred bills in a stack. And I sit on my desk. Right. And it's a cool tool to, to do. And you don't have to have ten grand to do this. Right? You can have a couple dollars, but sit on your desk, put it in your way. Just. And, and, and like you said, like, as you, as you started talking in the beginning in the introduction, Kathy, it's like, just talk to it, ask it questions and it will speak back. And again, it's in our, in our heads, but don't discount the stories that it's telling you what's coming up. Like, so pen and paper, and I'll do that. Like every morning I come in and talk to my money and been like, Hey, what are we doing today? What's going on? And I'll just kind of gather my thoughts and, 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 and kind of journal about them. Because if we want a relationship with money, if we want more of it in our lives, if we want more in our bank accounts, we got to start showing up for it, you know, because I don't know, I, I don't know about you, Kathy, but I don't usually have friends that stay with me very long if I don't ever invite them over. Right? <laughs> I or, love that. That's a great way to think over, about it. It is. But if I do invite them over, I don't stick them in a closet either. I was mm-hmm. talking to other day, they're like, well, I have cash, but it's like hidden in an envelope in my desk drawer. I'm mm-hmm. like, I, I understand that. However, if you bring it out and you actually talk to it, how much mm-hmm. better relationship could you have instead of having to hide it? You know, then it becomes, like I said, that friend that, you know, you're hiding from your parents or something when they come in and like, you know, you're not supposed to have friends over. You're like push them into the closet before <laughs> they, they, you get caught with them. Like, Oh, so- I'm getting, I'm being caught with money. And you know what? That is really interesting because I just had a conversation just before I got on here with you. Um, someone who, you know, a big part of what I do is I help people who are in corporate work, who want to move into having their own business. And this woman was like, that is like that. And she's just started my program. And uh, we were talking about how much she could earn and how she would talk with people about what they're looking for and how much they're already paying for this. And she goes, oh, I could never ask someone how much they're paying for a service. That is taboo. Yeah, And I thought, oh, this is interesting money story that you have. So what would you tell somebody who, because that is that corporate mindset that they get. We yep. don't talk about money here, right? right? If you do, then you get punished in the corporate world. They don't want to. That's exactly what she said. Up, right. They don't want to rising up with their employees. That's really what it's about. And it drives mm-hmm. me absolutely crazy because I'm like, why, why hide that? Right. Yeah. I remember working at one place and I found out what another guy made. Um, I was 20 years younger than him. I had less experience mm-hmm. and I made almost three times what he made. Wow. I'm like, how do you survive, dude? Like this makes no sense, mm-hmm. but we don't, we don't talk about it. Right. And it's, it's money becomes one of those subjects. It, it becomes like the, the third wheel of the non talked about subjects. And it drives me crazy. Right. Cause we don't ever like the family table. Mm-hmm. We don't ever talk about politics, religion, and then money's never talked about. And the only time people really see that money's talking about is in a negative, you know, like parents fighting um, or, or in the corporate world, back to that one, right? It's mm-hmm. us not getting the raise that we think we're going to get this year because the budget doesn't allow or the famous economy is mm-hmm. always in a place where it can't afford the raise. Mm-hmm. Right? Now we have to make what we're getting paid stretch further. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my, my answer to that, just start talking about it. The more we talk about it, the more we're going to be comfortable talking about it, especially in the services industry. It's like saying, Hey, I'm going to, I, I want to, I want to sell a service. Like let's pick, I don't know, website design, right? I, mm-hmm. I want to build websites for people. 
but I'm never going to tell people my price because I'm afraid of money. I'm just going to like do it. <laughs> and, and yeah, that was funny because we would never do that in business. We're like, no, it, it, there's money for my services. However, a lot mm-hmm. of people starting out give their stuff away for free because they're scared of that conversation. Right. So if we start to have the conversation around it, then we get more comfortable. And that's why I start out with like writing the money, have it on your desk, have it like in your space, move it around every day, like just spend time with it. Because the more time we spend with it, the more comfortable we get talking about numbers. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a lot of clients who don't even look at their numbers. Like they wait for their accountant or bookkeeper to like tell them when there's a problem. I'm like, how do you guys run a business? Right. Like, no idea what, like what's coming and going. Like that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And Joe, you know, that's where I was when I met you. Yeah. I didn't know what my numbers were. I didn't, I, part of, you know, part was I was in denial and part was that, and the reason I was in denial is because I hadn't really done the numbers to see how bad I was yeah, or how good it is. Right. I That's mean, you have thing. to know you those know. facts. And, yeah. and the, 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 the cool thing about humans is we're awesome storytellers. Right. So let's oh, yeah. back to the relationship, right? We hear parents spite, but we don't understand the con the context, of what they're talking about. And we don't, mm-hmm. we can't ask them questions. Right. Cause again, money is a taboo conversation to have at home. So what mm-hmm. do we do? We fill in the gaps. Right? We create the rest of that story. So as business owners, we do the same thing. We're like, I don't, we're working really hard, but if we don't look at our numbers, we know what's in the bank account, but what's that money allocated for? I don't know. So pretty soon we're broke all the time, but we're working really hard. Right. Or we're just like, I don't know what's in there. There's money always in the bank account. So I'm just going to spend, 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 right? There's different behaviors, but it's all driven from, you know, the behaviors we learned young. And then we attach mm-hmm. the money and then we just continue to interact with it as we get older. Mm -hmm. So that's, that becomes a problem, especially if we're trying to grow our businesses, you know, um, the people transition from the corporate world to business, right. That's a problem there. And then, you know, like your story, right. Where you got stuck at a certain amount, Mm -hmm. it's like every time Mm -hmm. we try to grow, then we just pull ourselves back. And it's almost like that crab mentality, right. Where we do it to ourselves, Mm -hmm. like, Oh, we're, we're growing out of this place, but no, you can't because this old story continues to hold us back. Mm -hmm. And we can't push it's forward. self-sabotage. It feels like self-sabotage. And yeah. then it I, there's also seems like there's a lot of shame around. Um, you have too much money. You have too little money. You don't want to talk about money. That's there's a lot of shame there, which is a really horrible thing to feel. Yeah. So any tips on how to overcome that shame around money, whether it's I have too much, I have too little. I don't want to talk about money because it feels shameful. And for that one, I would say, again, like I love journaling exercises and just ask yourself, why? Why do I have shame around talking about it? Because mm-hmm. it, we really shouldn't, and I hate using the word shouldn't, but it, like we shouldn't be afraid of it. We shouldn't feel shame around it. Shame is right. going to cause us to hide every time. But if we can figure out what that, that internal dialogue that we're not listening to is around it, mm-hmm. then we can start to make changes. Even putting it on paper. I have lots of exercises yeah. where I have people just put their thoughts on paper. And then what happens is it becomes not so big and ambiguous. It becomes pretty detailed on the paper. And then we mm-hmm. can do something about it, right? We can be like, I mean, sometimes this is the simple just mindset shift to be like, oh, that's not a real thing. Why am I thinking that? Mm-hmm. Right. And sometimes yeah. there are actionable steps you can take. You can be like, hey, I feel like X, Y, and Z is the problem. And you're like, okay, you know, I might need to go talk to some people, right? Maybe you have stories that weren't, that you haven't been able to piece together and you can go talk to your parents about what happened during a certain time in your life. You can talk to your siblings mm-hmm. or your spouse or, you know, people, but it's like, we got to get it out because otherwise then it becomes kind of this kind of monster story in our head mm-hmm. and it doesn't serve us. And then we sit there and right. we're shameful. And every time money comes up, we want to hide from it. Mm-hmm. Or every time, you know, the conversation comes up about, um, you know, bills, bills are another one, right? Because it always means that stuff's going out. We never have enough. And the shame, right. I think at the end of the day, Kathy, when most, when I get down to it for most people, it's a, you know, really they're not enough. And if they're not enough, uh-huh, then how can yeah. you go do the big things they want to do? Right. And it's that's just- one of the things that we discovered with me was I had that feeling of that. I wasn't enough. Yeah. I wasn't worth more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's one of the sure. things you helped me discover. And when you look at that, like for you every year, it just continued to remind you, you had bigger goals and ambitious, but you only mm-hmm. made that hundred thousand. So right. apparently you're not, you're not enough to, to go make a million dollar business and help all these wonderful people. Right. 
right? And so then we just, we, we continue to like kind of implode in ourselves to when then, when, and then we're not happy, especially as business owners, like building businesses and business and business overall is hard enough. And then we just like make it harder sometimes. And it's hard mm -hmm. enough. Why can't we find the joy in what we're doing? Because why are we doing it otherwise? You know? Yeah. And then we layer. So, like, do you recommend practicing talking to your spouse or significant other or family members or whoever it is that is involved with money with you? Do you recommend talking with them about money um, yeah, so that you get I mean, more used to it? Especially your spouse. I see, uh, and I'm not going to, I have my own thoughts about finances within uh, a family, right? Because everybody has a different mm -hmm. idea. And, oh, uh, yeah. Right. And I don't want to like dive too far into that, but having a healthy. <laughs> That's okay. Money. Because everybody has it. Like, I mean, you know, Debbie and I can combine our finances when we first got married. And for me, and I, and I think looking back, that was one of the best things we could have done because there's no hiding money, different bank accounts. There's none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Access to all the finances. And it's, it is a combined team effort. Now, that doesn't mean there's never conflict in the conversation. Right. But at the end of the day, we know that every time we sit down to talk about finances, that we can at least have a civilized conversation about what's coming and going. And we make a plan. Mm -hmm. And it's never about like, if we want something, it's like, how do we fit it in the budget? It's not, oh, you just can't have that anymore. So, right. you know, my uh, sit down at least two times a month. I know that like, I would say weekly and have kind of a conversation with your spouse about the family finances. Um, you know, and at first that might be a five minute conversation. Like, hey, we're going to talk about finances. Everybody's grumpy. Nobody wants to talk about it. Like, cool. We conclude our meeting after five minutes. That's okay, mm -hmm. but continue to have yeah. that consistency in it is going to start to build the trust that, hey, we can have a, a conversation. It might not mm -hmm. be always the most fun conversation, but we can start looking at it in a way that this is a relationship building exercise in a, in, in a way that we can build a relationship with money, not necessarily between spouses. Eventually, we'll bring them together. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of divorce and a lot of discontent within families around finances. Um, oh, yeah. You know, but it's everybody bringing their own stories about money to the table. And then right. at the end of the day, it's more, hey, I can't have what I want. And I can't have what I want because we don't have a budget for it. And pretty soon you're like five years later, you know, you just see it kind of build over time uh, as I watch mm -hmm. different cases and talk to different people. When it's like, mm -hmm. if we could just like have these conversations sooner, then we're going to, we, we can stop a lot of the conflict that comes later. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's like a festering wound. If, if we get cut oh, or something, yeah. that's what it was gonna, with like, me, you know, we're not just going like, <laughs> to leave it open and like, let the elements try to fix it. We're going to like mm -hmm. take care and feeding. Like if I cut my arm, I'm going to do something to take care of that wound. Um, a lot of time finances, you know, like you're just saying finances in, in your life and your marriage, that relationship don't ever, it doesn't, it's never resolved, right? It's like this festering wound that we never are able to resolve because we don't want to look at it. We want to shy right. away from it. I didn't want to look at it. It's too big, right? It becomes so it was big. it was huge. It was like a monster. <laughs> In my mind, it was. And there's no place to live. Like that's the thing that gets me. It's like there's no place to live because look at how much different your life is now compared to how it was, Kathy. Oh yeah. You know, and yeah. the things you're like choosing into and you know, just changing those small shifts in your brain to be like, oh hey, like this comes up, but it's not a big deal. Like I know how to work through it. Mm-hmm. There's another, and if uh, I don't, I know who to contact Joe yeah. Burns, <laughs> right? There's it's another, like, who are we going to call Joe Burns? I just <laughs> dub that into the Ghostbuster song. <laughs> yeah. So there's another topic that I want to touch on here that I, that you and I had a interesting conversation about, and I want to hear your philosophy on this. And we had this conversation when COVID hit because um, a lot of people were like, I'm going to hold on tight to all of my money. I'm not going to spend anything. And then there were other people who were like, uh, oh, I can't market my business during this time because it's COVID. And you and I had a conversation about the flow of money. Would you talk about that philosophy yeah. that you have a bit? This is good because I was just going to bring up an example of, of, I mean, there's you, there's some other people I work with. Um, there, there's one lady I work with that she's part of like an investment group. And when COVID hit, mm -hmm. right, and the stock market going up and down and the craziness, um, she's like, you know, I've been pretty just like even chill through this whole thing. And we've actually made money in the end. But other people in her group are like having come aparts. Because um, mm. here's the thing about the flow of money, right? 
yeah, the pandemic sucks. Like it really does suck. And my heart goes out to all the business owners who literally haven't oh, been yeah. able to work because there, there's some right. industries where they just can't work. Mm-hmm. My heart goes out to those because it sucks. It's hard. Uh, there was no way they could pivot. And a lot of them have lost their businesses. Um, mm-hmm. And so my, my heart really does go out for those people. Now, I'm not talking to those people right now. Everybody else didn't innovate enough to keep their businesses going. Like, let's just be honest. I know so many yeah. people, especially like the beauty care kind of sector. I'm like, okay, so haircutting salons were shut down. Could get your hair cut for a long time. And now around the nation, different things are happening. But let's be honest, YouTube is still a real thing. And people still needed to learn how to take care of themselves at home. Like there's ways to innovate. So the innovation, because what happens is a lot of people heard pandemic and people started freaking out. And what happens is I always like equate money to water, right? I, I grew up camping and hiking as a, as a, a um, you know, a Boy Scout and went to Eastern, Eastern Utah is beautiful. If you love to, for all those who are looking for a cool place to go uh, hike and camp. Um, but I just remember, right. And looking at water and, and water does such a good job when we have the right amount of it, there's a lot of growth, a lot of life that's given. If we stop the flow of water, um, I remember so many times coming upon like small ponds that had not moved for a while, right? And they start to get really putrid and, and stagnant and they just smell really bad. Life doesn't grow there anymore, right? It's not like I can go drink that water and be okay. Mm-mm. If you look at the other side though, if there's too much water raging down like a river, it starts to destroy, right? Your money and, can, and the flow of life can be the same way. Right. So for you, you know, when we talk, Kathy, it's like, let's just keep doing things, right? We might need to innovate, we might need to change a few things up, but let's just like keep going business as usual because it's not mm-hmm. going to be as bad as what you feel like it might be. And if we don't mm-hmm. buy into the fear, being conscious of what's going on is important. Mm-hmm. But there's a difference between being conscious of what's going on and buying into the fear and kind of that sensationalism that something like this brought on. And, and Understandably enough, there's, I mean, it's a virus who knows like what it was, especially back at the beginning of 2020, right? I mean, there was a lot of yeah. unknowns, but understanding and, you know, looking at how this year's went, um, people have a lot of money. They really do. I mean, there are people who have lost jobs and again, my heart goes out to them, but everybody else is still spending the same. The thing is now is they're not spending on what they used to, like what live entertainment, concerts, movies, things like that but they still have the money. So the question is, where are they spending now? Like the, the spending habits shifted. And it's like, mm-hmm. did us as business owners adapt or did we just be like, or were we just like, well, my industry is messed up so I can't make anything. Like I know a lot of business owners who've had record years this year in sales. I do too. Yeah. And mm-hmm. virtual assistants and virtual experts, that's one of the industries that has just exploded with us yeah. because I mean, you know, everybody one, wanted right? to get online. Yeah. yeah, everybody had to get online. Like you had to go online this year. If you had an offline business, it had to go online this year. Mm-hmm. And a lot of business owners weren't prepared for that. Like they didn't even know how to do an right. online business. So they're like, I need help. Like, come help us. Like, yeah, we need something. <laughs> so looking at the industries and, and, you know, for the foreseeable future, I don't see that this is going to change. Like we started a trend, which is really cool, especially in the workforce, right? It's saying, hey, listen, we can do business a different way, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. I like it. I love innovation. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what do we need to do to continue on? But looking at the flow of money, we definitely don't want to hoard it because those who hoarded their money this year did not grow their businesses and their businesses are actually probably worse off had they not. On the other hand, we didn't want to spend like it was going out of style because, you know, some people went like all in and that can be destructive a little bit too. But if we can find, mm-hmm. and for everyone, there's no hard and fast rule for this, right? But if we can find kind of that mm-hmm. balance between, you know, saving for what we know we need and then still investing in ourselves and in our businesses, the people who I saw that found that balance are actually in a really good place to start off 2021. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will tell you, I am, I'm in a really good place. And I, I just really realized that that conversation with you back when COVID hit, really shifted for me because it was sort of like, mm, I kind of needed your approval in a way. And instead of giving me your approval, you gave me your knowledge 
which was, you know, the flow of money is important. And if it stops with you and it can't flow into somebody else, then there's not going to be any more flow into you because you've just stopped it. Right. So how's it going to flow back to you? And I was like, oh, oh, I like that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not doing a bad thing by helping other people start businesses when they've lost their jobs or been furloughed in COVID. I'm helping them. And we're assistants aren't hurting by offering their services for sale during this they're helping people yeah um, because you know i know a lot of the virtual experts that i coach they went to people that had brick and mortar businesses that they were already working with and said would you like to brainstorm how we can pivot to get you online so that you can keep your business running even companies like construction businesses that said there's no way we can do this online and the virtual experts said, hey, let's see if we can find a way. And they did. Yeah, I remember you telling me the one story of that. And I just, it, it floored me. But again, going back to the innovation mm -hmm. thing, it's like they, they, they didn't sit, they didn't sit mm -hmm. down and be like, oh, this is going to happen, right? Because of money. Like, oh, we're not getting money. Now we have to make people off. They're like, how can we continue right. to grow our business in a time when it's forcing us to change? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, look at, you look at the technological advances that happen if they said, oh, hey, you know, this is a bad business year for us. We're not going to do something that's risky. Mm -hmm. you know, we, might, we might not have iPhones, right? And, and, and smartphones and all this stuff that make our lives better. They just said, mm -hmm. oh, we give up. Right. Right. But we, we run with mm -hmm. all these stories and we have really bad relationships with money. And you can see it in the corporate world. Like people are like, but Joe, corporates are, corporations are different. No, they're not. Because they're still being led by human beings with stories. And they're letting the numbers and the analytics mm -hmm. kind of push some of their decisions. But at the end of the day, those gut feelings they have are the ones that are really making the big decisions and taking the the most or least amount of risk in the end. You know, you see it all, mm -hmm. like one last example is you see it all the time in the stock market. Like when COVID first hit and when the nation finally decided that it was going to be a thing, right? Back in like March, mm -hmm. I, I literally read and everybody's expecting the stock market to crash and it kind of came down a little bit and came back and it's been kind of over. Mm -hmm. I, re I really thought it would crash. I did. A lot of people Boy, did. was I wrong. <laughs> and, and, and then the, and the small, the small portion who were smart and waited for it. Like I remember reading a story about he was a hedge fund manager, and he took like two and a half million of of one of his funds, and he's like, "Listen, I'm going to make a bet. I'm going to bet that this is what's going to happen based on trends." But he's like, he didn't let his stories get in the way. He's like, "But I bet the market's going to come back." And in a matter of like, I think I, I, I have to go back and find the article because it was amazing. But like in like six weeks. He turned the two and a half million into like two and a half billion. Wow. Yeah. And That's which, amazing. I'm, I'm not a financial guy, so I don't know like which methods he used and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But I'm like, right. again, right. it goes back to if we'll look for the opportunities in situations like COVID and other things, then we'll find mm -hmm. the opportunities for us to grow and expand. If we we'll look for the opportunities mm -hmm. and for us to like miss out on those things, if we're, be, you know, because it is a choice still, right? It's an opportunity to not do mm -hmm. anything. Then right. we're not going to grow. Mm -hmm. But it all comes down to this relationship, because if we if we don't have it, then it's hard to be like, hey, how can you help out? Resources come from other people. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just be honest. Networking is important in business. You have to network because through these connections is how you're going to make other connections, which are going to bring uh, revenue and opportunity. Mm -hmm. Cool opportunities that might not always bring revenue, but cool opportunities and people you can meet. It's your business. But if you if you miss it mm -hmm. out, like if you're just like, oh, money's a thing, and I'm scared and I have to work too hard for it, then mm -hmm. you're going to find that opportunity too. to just kind of like pull back and not do what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Joe, um, one of the things that I want to uh, see if I've got right uh, so that everybody can understand what you do. Sometimes when people think about money, they think, well, you do my profit and loss statement, or you help me create a budget or something else, you know, you're going to tell me how to save my money or, you know, things like that. That's not what you do, right? No, that's not. And a lot of people come to me and be like, <laughs> okay, finance stuff, Joe. And I'm like, well, I know how to create a budget because I've had one for a long time because I got to go like mm -hmm. what's coming and going, but yeah, not accounting, not none of that stuff. Like all that financial stuff interests me, but I have my Sorry. own bookkeeper. I have my own accountant. Like they take care of all the tax stuff because that's not me. What I fundamentally focus on is really the emotional side of money. How does it, you know, what, what, because at the end of the day, money is a result, right? Money, success, however you want to label that, it's a, a result. 
right? And we're going to mm-hmm. go take actions in our business and life to get that result. What I like to focus on is why are we taking those actions and what's influencing us to take those actions? Because if we can start to change the emotion and the thoughts and the, and the feelings around us taking action, then we can have mm-hmm. a different result. So that's all the emotional side of money is what I focus on. And in doing so, you know, people can look at their budgets and balance sheets and, and see the number increase. Um, I've actually seen a, a, a growing trend right now within my clientele that after working with me, they're tripling their monthly income. All because they're focusing on the that. emotional side and fixing the things within themselves, taking more calculated risks, right? In their businesses, the ways that will help them grow it and not mm-hmm. stay back kind of stuck in that I'm not sure area, but help them mm-hmm. be confident enough in moving forward. And it's cool to watch. Yeah, well, I tripled mine. You know, I went from 100,000 to 300,000 that year we worked together. Yeah. yeah. So I tripled mine. So uh, that's, that's awesome that you're seeing that trend that your clients triple their income. And it's not because you give them new tactics on how to build their business. Uh, it's because you help them talk to their money and listen to hear what their money says back and shift their money stories. Yep. And really, I mean, people say, oh, I, and I was on a call with somebody uh, this week. And they're like, oh, okay. So they're like, I said, so I have a couple of things I want you to do, right? Like the end of the call. They kind of got this this face on them like, okay, what are you going to hit me with? Like kind of flinch mode. I'm like, okay, do these like two things. And she looked at me and she's like, wow, I thought you were going to give me something much harder. (laughs) I'm like, it's not like, it's not hard things, but it's just like looking at life. It can be simple. I always Mm -hmm. tell my clients, I can give you simple tools, but they might not be easy. But just simplicity, right? right? It's just like moving that that dial just a little bit. If we can move that dial just a little bit each day, Mm -hmm. they all add up, Mm -hmm. right? It's not revolutionary, but if we don't look at it that way, and we think, oh, this just, you know, all this debt and the money, just something I don't want to talk about. And we just kind of put it all in a box and put it on a shelf and hope one day that it will just resolve itself. Mm-hmm. So I have one more question before we wrap up here. And it is, um, do you see that as a people has people's businesses grow or as they change in other ways in their lifestyle or where they are in their life. Do you need to work with them again sometimes or often because now they've they've gotten stuck in a different way about their money? Oh, most definitely. It's a it's an iterative, like my favorite, uh, my favorite quote of all time is from Trek, right? It's like ogres are like onions, right? We got the layers. Um, <laughs> and I find that with my clients all the time, right? Like we'll work on we'll work on a few things and they go and they start to master that, right? And the mastery all becomes from that, right? If you look at uh, my favorite is a few years ago, I, I really started um, studying martial arts. And I'm like, it's that same thing that like you have masters, but how they get there through that iteration of trying and trying again. And at, the, at one point, it might be surface level and it's really easy to solve. We see results. And then we, we come back and we hit that same thing because our stories, right? Which we go off those, those behaviors, right? Have been reinforced for so long that they show up in different ways in our lives. So it's catching those and being like, okay, this is what it was like before, but how does this, you know, relate to where I'm at now? So mm-hmm. most definitely a lot of where, how I work with people now, um, I used to do small packages and, and, you know, work with them for small amounts of time. And I'm finding that they're the ones that have the best success are the ones who stay with me for at least a year at a time now, because they do mm. this, that constant reinforcement, because we're changing old behaviors. Like I say, they're right. showing up in different ways. But yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a lifelong journey. I'll continue to learn about money and, and continue to, to master it for myself. Uh, I've been working on it for, I mean, like I said at the beginning, technically, really, as I look at my journey, it started and uh, that I can mark in like 2008, but I've actually been working on it for the last five years. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I learn, I teach myself new stuff every day. My clients teach me new stuff every day. You know, I, I love coaching for that reason because I'm like, oh, I didn't think about it like that. It might be too advanced for them for me to like spin back off, but I capture that. And I'm like, okay, I'm learning something new because it's, there's, we're complex human beings and there's no, oh, yeah. no easy answers. Um, but I think if we just keep at it right over and over. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's not like, Hey, one and done, there you go out the door, but it's like, Hey, you know, how, how, how do we want to continue to reframe this conversation over and over? So then we, we can continue to master the small different pieces of our lives and then when we combine all the pieces, it becomes something transformational. 
Yeah. So if you're listening, if you're somebody listening to this episode right now, and you're thinking, wow, I think I probably have some money stories that I need help with. Um, who describe the kind of person that is going to be best suited to work with you, Joe? I'm really looking for the entrepreneur, um, solopreneur, um, business owner who's really has a big dream for their business, but their business isn't where that big dream's at yet, but that they don't have like the financial means right now to make that big, big dream happen. Um, those are the people I like working with. They have to have some income. Um, they have, you know, like I say, a solopreneur, entrepreneur, uh, business owner, um, and just helping them get to that next level, right? Tripling your income. Cause what could we do with triple what we're making now? Um, mm -hmm. you know, to really make that big dream happen. Yeah. So how do they get a hold of you if they're like, yeah, I think I might be interested in working with Joe. I want to learn more. So probably one of the first steps I'd have everybody do. Um, I do have a, a freebie that you download this uh, PDF assessment, kind of tell you where to start working. And I, I like that, right? Give people actual steps to start right now. Uh, so the place I would send them right now is I go to www.attitudesofmoney.com and just ask for your name and email and I'll email you a PDF. And like I say, it's just an assessment. Uh, be real about taking the assessment. Be true about it. Ask just some, a few questions about each attitude. Um, and then it gives you an idea of where to start. And then there's an email that follows up to say, hey, here, okay, now you have that done. Here's what you do next. Fabulous. And I know because I'm on your newsletter mailing list, email list, I get your newsletter regularly. And I, I, very, I very rarely read newsletter, e-newsletters these days because they can be really boring. Yours is awesome. Thank you. It's I short it. to the point and powerful. No, that's my goal, right? Because I'm the same way. I don't read hardly any of them. So I'm like, if I'm going to be mm -hmm. sending this out, how can I help people take actionable step mm -hmm. um, and, and consume it really quick? So I send them out once a week, the really short reads but they give you a step to do every week. Mm -hmm. And it's always something I open it up and go, how did he know I needed this today? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for those. They're, they're, they're really, really good. And uh, if somebody wants to sign up for your newsletter, um, can they, does that happen if they download that PDF that you're talking about? It will, if they don't want the, if they don't want to do the PDF route and they just want the newsletter, mm -hmm. Uh, they can go to mm -hmm. www.josephmburns.com and there's a, a form at the bottom you can fill out and it'll, you'll just be added to the newsletter only. Okay. So a couple different ways you and, can get on my list. Yeah. What if somebody's listening to this and they're like, I'd love to have him on my podcast or does he do speaking or does he do group coaching or anything like that? What do you do, Joe? Do you do those things also? I do. I'm on uh, quite a few podcasts talking about money and, and the relationship of it um, and speaking as well. Yeah. I wanted really to keep you person. all from us. I wanted to keep you all from myself, but you wouldn't let me. <laughs> You're cheating on me on the other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, definitely. And there's uh, information about topics that I will speak on um, on my website as well. Um, there's a whole speaking section. Um, and if you want to get a hold of me, there's a, there's an email address on there that you can send an, uh, an email and, uh, that comes right to me. Uh, that's one of the few things that my team does not take care of, but that comes right to me and, and I filled all those. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, I'm happy to come speak to your groups about this. Uh, definitely passionate about it. And, uh, you know, just want to help, help people start reframing this conversation around money in a way that can be positive for the world and, and their communities. Um, so we can start looking at it differently and, and start making an impact in this world. So, um, I want everybody to know, I do, I do actually know that Joe's a speaker and he does coaching because after he helped me so tremendously, I knew that he could help the women that I train, the virtual experts. And I invited him in to speak at my event. How many events have you spoken at of mine now? Uh, every one since I first invited you. I know that. What, three? The one we did have a little bit ago was now? number three, so. Yeah, yeah. And then you speak um, monthly and quarterly to different groups that I have running, mastermind groups that I have running. And I know for sure that you have really helped them shift their mindset around money and help them grow their businesses tremendously. 
Yeah, those, so, are, those are a lot of fun. Like to, to snap in, like, you know, to, to help out with the mastermind groups of people I know, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Not something I'm like, it wasn't planned that way, but people have the need. Um, so it's a lot of fun, like, to step into somebody else's groups and be like, hey, we're going to talk about money today and how it specifically, um, you know, impacts, like, your, your industry right here. It's a lot of fun to kind of niche that down and be like, hey, Kathy, for your people, here's exactly what they need because they might need something different than other people. So I love it. It's yeah. so much fun. And uh, Joe, you know how much everybody in my group loves you. They're just like, is Joe going to be speaking? It, are we going to have Joe Burns this time? And you did a webinar for us that is still available in our membership area. And I, every time we have a new student that comes in and they get to that webinar, they're like, Joe Burns is amazing. I just did one of the exercises and I just loved what I found out from. I didn't want to do it to begin with, but I did it and I really got a lot out of it. So don't think Joe's just woo woo. He's not woo woo actually at all. Yes, he is intuitive, but he has very practical exercises that he shares. So Joe, I find that um, I'm really bragging on you, but that's because I think you're amazing and you are the best at what you do that I have ever run into. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, stick around and hang out with you if I didn't think the same, like <laughs> your, your group. Yeah. Cause I can be a real pain in the butt. I, you know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know you didn't just say that, but I know I can be a pain in your butt and I appreciate you so much. So yeah. if any of you are thinking about working, wanting to know more about Joe Burns and his money master, how he is a money master, um, we will have the links to everything that he just talked about in our show notes. I highly recommend going and checking it out downloading that assessment, that PDF, going through that and getting on his newsletter and then seeing what else you want to do to increase your money. So Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me on, Kathy. It's been a, a very big pleasure. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.